welcome to the Gleaner Podcast for Wednesday, February 7th, 2024. I'm Chantal Hortop, Managing Editor for the Gleaner and host for this season of the podcast. Today, the Gleaner's Kellen Forrester speaks to Scott Templeton of the Riverfield Curling Club. When it comes to looking back at long histories of organizations in the Valley, they don't get much longer than this curling club's. They are gearing up to celebrate their 200th anniversary next season, and they are the fourth oldest remaining curling club in Canada. Callan and Mr. Templeton touch on the early days of the club, as well as what's in store for the years ahead. So, let's hurry hard into today's episode. Happy listening! So, welcome Scott. Thank you so much for meeting with us today. We're so excited to have you on the podcast. I was wondering if you could kind of start just by introducing yourself and telling us a little bit about your role with the Riverfield Curling Club. Yeah, well, hi, Callan, and thank you for having me today. Um, yeah, my name is Scott Templeton, um, a long time, all my life resident of the Chattagay Valley in the Howick Riverfield area, and uh, I've been involved with the club for close to 50 years now. started wow. when I was a young teenager and still fairly actively involved. Uh, I've been recycled president two or three times over the years for different period lengths of time. And uh, right now I'm president again for the past year and probably for the next year or two. I've been involved in the ice making uh, for about the last 15 years. Uh, I'm help maintain the ice. I've been bartender, help with renovations, kind of a little bit of everything. So it, uh, it's kind of a neat little club with a lot of history. And uh, we have a very kind of tiny core group of uh, volunteers that have a passion for the curling and a passion for the club and we're just trying to keep our little club alive. You mentioned that it's got such a a long history I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about its history and its roots um, and where it kind of came from and where it is now. Well it uh, originated uh, around Riverfield originally it was called the English River Curling Club on the banks of the English River and uh, back almost 200 years ago there was uh, four or five clubs along the banks of the English River between almost every concession had a curling club. There was one in Howick and then the Fertile Creek Curling Club, the English River Curling Club, and the Aubrey Curling Club, and then back the Scotch concession near Riverfield. Originally was a little club called the Lansdowne Club. And uh, so it started in 1825, the English River Curling Club, and started out with wooden blocks uh, carved out of, or a turn on a lathe out of rough some were rough box some were were carved uh, by hand and some early settlers from Scotland uh, started curling on ponds and on on the river and uh, gradually over the years uh, think conditions improved and there were curling irons and that started around uh, 18 in the 1880s then in about 100 years ago, or in 1925, 1930, uh, and since that, it's been pretty much granites. And all the granites in curling stones all around the world come from, from a little island off the coast of Scotland called Ailsa Craig. So uh, what happened with it then after, uh, it was in uh, the 50s, I guess, there was a fire uh, at the Aubrey Curling Club and then English River Club and... Um, Aubrey Club amalgamated and became the Riverfield Curling Club. So originally it was the English English River Curling Club starting in 1825 and present day it's and for many years it's been the Riverfield Curling Club. So interesting. I know that, you know, in the Valley we have a lot of Scottish immigrants and and Mm -hmm. families that have been here for a long time. So it's cool to see that that piece of the culture that's kind of stayed with us for so long. I'd love to know, you mentioned doing it on the pond, and I know that there are some people in the valley who still have memories of of doing things like playing curling on the pond. I wonder if you ever got to experience that. Honestly, no, I've never curled on a pond, but at my ancestral home on the Scotch Concession, there was, there was, that was one of the original curling places uh, almost almost 200 years ago, almost. So it's, uh, it's kind of neat. There's a, 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 quite a, deep history in my family uh, of Templetons that have been involved in curling for the past, I guess, close to 200 years. So That's so interesting. So did you grow up curling and was that something that was always around? Yeah, I was always around the Riverfield Curling Club as a kid. Present day club was built in uh, 1961, uh, the year after I was born. So I remember being there as long as I can remember. I was there. My parents were members and uh, 
hanging around the curling club when I started curling a little bit uh, in my pre-teens. Then I really joined and became active curler when I was 13 or 14. So uh, a long time ago now. I'd love to know for you what place you think curling holds in the valley. You know, it seems like something that a lot of people are very involved with. And I'd love to know if you have thoughts on why that is. I think it's uh, maybe less so nowadays, but Mm -hmm. even like 50 years ago when I was a kid, it was kind of the social hub Mm -hmm. of the community. And there was a a curling club in Huntington, Ormstown, uh, up until not many years ago, there was a club in Howick and it closed. Mm -hmm. There was a club in Beau Chateau between Bohornois and Chateauguay. It got expropriated by Auto Route 30, also Riverfield, and also La Cole. It's not only, it is kind of a social hub, but uh, uh, it's not only a curling club. I mean, we have all kinds of events there throughout in the off season. We've had weddings, we've had funeral receptions, we've had uh, comedy nights, uh, we've he ha- used the club facility for movie rentals. Uh, all kinds of things and we're the, we're the, the Riverfield Curling Club is the only uh, liquor license facility in all of Howick and the surrounding parish Prey St. Sacramento so uh, I mean we have uh, a bar available too for those that want to partake so and we have a junior program at our club uh, that has been revived since the pandemic. COVID was hard on us I mean we lost some members uh, things slowed down but we're being uh, rejuvenated by uh, uh, one or two in- very influential and helpful members that have uh, got us uh, kind of revved up again towards our 200th anniversary next year. So the other thing, I mean, it's, uh, you know, of all the sports, it's probably the least uh, costly. I mean, there doesn't require a lot of equipment uh, and you can start curling when you're five years old you can curl till you're 95 years old all kinds of uh, options and it's not just the curling club but it's kind of a, a, a social hub around riverfield i remember in high school like sometimes on friday nights my friends and i would go to the curling club for hamburger soup i think this yeah. was a curling club and like that was yeah. that was a very exciting social event yeah. for us when you're 14. <laughs> well, we've had we've had uh, this winter we're having three family nights once a month on a friday night we have uh uh like last Last Friday night, there was a, a taco night for families. It's about five bucks a person, and people can come out and curl. We had about 40 people, and uh, people had their their supper and curled. And then in February, we're doing a soup and grilled cheese night for five bucks, and then we're doing a, uh, a spaghetti night in March for family night. So it's uh, – we have – and we also have leagues during the week. I mean, our membership is down. We have about 40 members all together, and it's kind of a core group. Uh, of the old faithfuls that uh, keep things rolling, which is mm-hmm. the way it is. But, uh, you know, things are, we've had a few lean years, but things are looking up again. So it's mm-hmm. kind of nice heading into our 200th anniversary. I mean, two, 200, 200 years is, uh, is something yeah. special. That's huge. Yeah. You mentioned that coming back from COVID, the, you were starting a junior program, I think you said? Yes. Um, yeah, I'd love to know how you're hoping to engage with the younger demographic. You mentioned that you tend to have older folks that are interested. But yeah, the, the younger generation, is that your goal to try to gain their attention? Yeah, well, that's what we've been trying to do with family nights. We get some of the young, young parents involved and we, you know, we get some quite a bit of interest there, plus their kids. So uh we had a juniors program when my kids were in juniors 20, 25 years ago, but uh, we had up to 50 kids at that point, and we're just kind of getting going again. And there's like, uh, I think, 10 or a dozen right now, but it's it's building, and uh, there seems to be a lot of interest. And uh, they had a chat with them last week about uh, maybe next year trying to have a little bond spiel get together with Ormstown Curling Club or Huntington Curling Club, and they were pretty excited about that, so... The, the challenging thing is there's so many other things going on compared to 50 years ago. I mean, right. uh, kids playing hockey, basketball, volleyball, all kinds of video games, uh, all kinds of other things. So it's uh, it's a different generation, but uh, we're uh, we're keeping the drive alive for 200 and beyond. And in your time kind of in the uh, curling community, how have you seen things kind of grow and change since you've started? Yeah, I haven't. Honestly, uh, I mean, I can't really say there's been a lot of growth right in our area. I mean, it's been it's been dwindling some. I mean, I know 
we've lost a couple clubs. Uh, the other, some of the other clubs that are still going are probably down in membership a little bit, but, uh, Curling has definitely evolved since I started. I'd say it's probably 20 years ago. Introduced what's called the free guard zone, which makes the game much more interesting. There's a whole lot more rocks in play, and there's a lot more finesse, and uh, not just uh, taking out, banging and banging your rocks together and taking every single rock out. There's a lot of uh, strategy, a lot of finesse uh, as far as the curling goes, and uh, sweeping has evolved also. I mean, we. Uh, I don't remember these used to sweep with kitchen brooms and then started it was a little a corn, what they call it a corn broom that made lots of noise and then it went on to push brooms, which is a lot quieter. And now there's carbon fiber handle brooms and there's changing different broom heads and there's directional sweeping to that some of the real top uh, curlers and sweepers can manipulate the stones quite a bit. So it's, it's evolved a lot in the past uh, 49 years since I've been curling, I guess. So. It's wild how technology really affects so much and like this development yeah. of new technologies. That's really cool. Yeah. Also the the timing, like stopwatch, mm -hmm. it's a time, the the speed of the ice, how long it takes to get from, you know, the the center line to the hog line, stuff like that. Lot, lots of changes. And, you know, with us seeing the, the numbers of uh, clubs diminishing and stuff in the region, why do you think that it's important to hold on to to clubs like the Riverfield Curling Club and the importance of having them around? I just think it's uh, has, particularly for Riverfield. I mean, all we really have in Riverfield is uh, half a dozen houses and a mm -hmm. church that's closed and a cemetery in the curling club. And uh, we have, uh, I think it's important to keep it alive for the surrounding neighborhood. And uh, sometimes it's challenging and sometimes, uh, you know, you wonder why you keep keep working at it but uh it's part of my dna i guess and uh, as well as a number of others and we just want to keep it alive and we're hoping that uh you know since covid we have some new members memberships some new interest and that we'll have the next generation to carry on and you've mentioned a couple times that it'll be your 200th anniversary next year I yeah. don't know how you're planning on celebrating or if you have any big plans in the works yeah i mean we're just getting into that so we've had one or two kind of brief uh, exploratory meetings you know we've had great support from uh, local businesses as sponsors we have signs up in the in the ice shed with uh, that that uh, people pay to advertise yearly and uh, so we're going to start off uh, we're starting our 200th season it'll be in the fall of 2024 it's coming fall and we're going to we're planning to start uh, with a kind of a homecoming we're going to reach out to past members over the past however many years 50 60 years and basically whoever's ever still alive and have a an afternoon evening uh, for with you know some uh, some stories and some memorabilia and some history and all that kind of stuff uh, probably in October maybe late September October before we start uh, the curling season and then uh, we're actually Riverfield Curling Club is going to host the uh, Quebec Provincial Firefighters Curling Championship. Oh wow! Uh, it's winter about a year from now in early February I believe it is. Uh, so that'll be kind of a neat, big event to host. And then the, our trademark at Riverfield Curling Club is the wooden blocks. And so we've had a, uh, the wooden blocks were, uh, were turned on a lathe by a, a, um, a member that uh, was very involved 50 or 60 years ago. And he, uh, his name was Roy Angel and he made two sets. He, he turned 32 wooden blocks on a lathe that, and that was to mark the 150th anniversary. And ever since that year, we've had an annual wooden block bond spiel. It's kind of a fun family thing. It's uh, one or two games of, I mean, they, they act differently. They're just, right. it's just, they're just for fun. But anybody, you know, curlers, non-curlers, any age, uh, anybody can give it a try. And it's just for fun. So it's kind of a tradition and it's kind of the trademark of the Riverfield Curling Club. And uh, we'll probably wind up the this the season with a kind of a banquet and with maybe some guest speakers some maybe a, a famous curler or two and uh, if we can get them lined up and we want to actually pay tribute to a, a member that we lost a couple of years ago he was his name is Morris Craig and he was kind of uh, the heartbeat of the club for a lot a lot of years and uh, we want to kind of pay tribute to him and uh 
wrap up the season and uh, start off our 201st season. That's the plan. We've been very fortunate over the years to have people like uh, Wayne McKell through the uh, Historical Society back Mm -hmm. in the 70s that documented a lot of history about the club Mm -hmm. and also uh, Jean Ferkel, who happens to be my aunt and she... uh, She's been, she's written a number of books and uh, has documented a fair bit of history about curling in the valley also. So we're also going to put out a, you know, like a commemorative book, commemorative booklet with uh, uh, some history and some information about the club. And of course, there'll be some sponsorships and stuff like that. So there's, uh, there's a fair bit going on in the next uh, next 14 months i would say that sounds like a lot of celebrations for the 200th season Very yeah, excited. <laughs> yeah. Well, we want to uh you know we're, we're the fourth oldest curling club in canada the oldest one is uh, uh royal montreal curling club that yeah. that uh, was founded in 1807 and i participated in that i played in their bicentennial bond spiel and went to the banquet up on mount royal in uh, 2007 and then uh, there was kingston club and i think it was 2020 they had their 2021 they had their 200th and halifax in 2024 and we're in 2025 so yeah 200 years we're the fourth oldest in in canada that's remarkable and it's so cool to to have it in such a a small area right like our region is yeah Small but mighty. Yeah, we'd uh, we like to think so. If anyone wants to participate in the family nights or any sort of events that are happening, where is the best place for them uh, to find information and to stay up to date? Uh, the best information, and I just want to make it uh, known that we're we're open and we're welcome for anybody to come and give it a try anytime no charge we have uh, lots of room. There's free parking, and uh, I kind of joke about that because when I went to the uh, the 200th bond spiel at Royal Montreal. We took us about half an hour to park and we were late for a game and it cost us 25 bucks and that's 17 years ago. And so mm-hmm. I, when I left the place, I left a poster for our bond spiel, Riverfield, and it said free parking. So, <laughs> but anybody's welcome anytime and to give it a try. And the best place uh, to contact us is at curlingriverfield at gmail.com. Perfect. And, uh, we have a Facebook page and uh, we have uh, our new, one of our newer members, Joanne Enrico, that takes care of that. She looks after our, our emails. And so anybody that, anybody, anytime wants to give it a try, just uh, send us an email or the, the number that we have an answering machine at the Curling Club. It's 450-825-2577 and it's located mm-hmm. at 2036 Route uh, 203 in Howard. Great. We actually are going to have our, we're just getting started for our wooden block bond spiel, which is going to take place on March 2nd this year, mm-hmm. a month from now. Uh, the word's getting out and uh, mm-hmm. we're uh, onwards and upwards. And the, the wooden blocks that you use, are they like, are you one of the only places in Canada that still does that? I think we are the only place probably in the world that does that. <laughs> it's kind of our trademark. Anybody can try it. It's just for fun, but uh it's a tradition at Riverfield. Right. That's amazing. Well, I think that was everything that I wanted to ask you about, but I'd love to know if there's any hidden gems that you'd love to share or anything that I, uh, you think that the people would like to know about your club. I think the hidden gems of our club are the, uh, the core tiny group that has the passion to keep the club alive. They know who they are. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thank you so much again for, for doing this. This has been really, yeah. really fun learning all about this. You're welcome. <laughs> I don't think there's anything I can say that can add to what Mr. Templeton said about those hidden gems we have here in the valley. So I'll just say, I'll put the contact information for the Riverfield Curling Club in the show notes for anyone who's interested in trying out curling or getting involved in the club. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday, February 21st, for a look at yet another piece of the valley's history. This podcast is made possible in part by funding from the Government of Canada through the Official Language Community Media Consortium, as well as a grant from the Bourse d'Initiative en Entrepreneuriat Collectif, a call for projects designed to support the creation and development of social economy enterprises and projects across the Montérégie region. Sound editing and sound design for the Gleaner podcast is done by Stacey Pennington. Our theme music is by Christopher Pennington. It is produced by me, Chantal Hortel. Don't forget to subscribe to the Gleaner podcast on your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss an episode. For more Gleaner content, check out our website at www.the-gleaner.com. 
I'll also put that link in the show notes. Thank you so much for listening, and we hope you'll join us again next time.